Want to build a bigger pole barn and save money? Let's talk about it now. Stay tuned. Hi, this is Paul from CountryCraziness.com. If you're interested in learning about post frame construction, tractors, and homesteading, well, you've come to a good place. Why not subscribe, tap the bell, and join in on the conversation? I've never heard anybody say, I wish I'd built my barn smaller. The day you move into the barn is the day you say, I wish I had built it bigger. But we're all constrained about our own individual finances. But what if we had a way that we could build a bigger barn so that in the future when we need more space, we'd have it available to us? And what I'm talking about is building and using some of that space as leasing to other people. There is an operation that's probably 20 miles from where my barn's located. It's uh, probably 10 minutes off of the interstate, and it rents out uh, storage capacity for trucks, barn, uh, RVs, or whatever. They have 14 foot by 40 foot stalls that have a 14 foot ceiling and a 12 foot door. Right down the street from there, maybe about 20 minutes, is where my property is located. I'm only a mile or so from the interstate entrance. I'm closer to going south if you're going that way for the winter time. I also have an abundance of campgrounds located around me. So for a lot of reasons, my property may actually be more uh, desirable for people to stay at than uh, the one that I'm telling you about that's a ways away from me. Let me talk a little bit about the dollars and cents of this type of transaction. And keep in mind, as always, this is all about my own barn my own area where I live, what the competitive activity is of other people that are doing things. So you have to take into account what your own situation is and what the circumstances are and what the local availability is from other people and what they're offering. It's 14 foot wide door, 16 foot high, and a 16 foot high ceiling. I would have had to make a couple of changes. One, I would have had to put either a man door here or a man door here, or in the same place out front of the barn. We're in the back right now looking forward. And the other thing I would have had to do is, in between these two doors, I would have had to build a wall up to the ceiling or close to the ceiling so that the tenant would have privacy. <coughs> Excuse me. Over here we got the electric panel. You can actually buy devices now where you can feed off an electric panel and meter something without having to have an additional outdoor meter put in. If this panel were put in again with a tenant, I would move it down the barn farther and then just put a tenant meter on there. Gas, if the customer wants to heat it, we could put a separate gas meter out there for him. And, uh, and that would be it. So you can see he would have a nice facility, including natural lighting on both sides. But the 16 foot ceilings, awesome. It's hard to find any rental place around that offers that kind of a ceiling. Now, before I talk dollars and cents, let me ask you to leave your comments down below if you've already leased out property in the past and what your experiences have been. And if you've also seen things that I've neglected to talk about in my dollars and cents evaluation, leave that information down below so that we could all benefit. Now, if we look at my particular barn, I already know that if I built it 50 feet wide by 40 feet deep, with the porch I have on there, my cost is about $50,000. If I finance it for 10 years at 5% interest rate, my monthly cost comes out to $530. If I took the same barn and added that extra bay on, and if it had the two 14 foot doors like shown in the pictures, my cost would go up to $689, you know, or an increase in the price of the barn, $15,000. In other words, for me to be able to break even between the smaller barn and the bigger barn, I would need to have a net income of $159. I could also use the $159 to pay the loan down faster. Once your loan's paid off, you've got a couple of options. One, obviously, is to keep a tenant and continue to have an income stream. The other one would be to reclaim that barn for your own and increase its size. Either way, it's a win. And don't forget, you always got to pay your taxes.
I crack myself up. <laughs>